Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage, Sierra Lynch! <laughs> I uh, spent a lot of time as a teenager in front of my computer screen avoiding my parents. And not because they were particularly bad parents, they were actually really great, but uh, because I was a teenager and it was a cheap form of escapism. <laughs> and for anyone who's ever been or pretended to be a young woman on the internet, you know that there's uh, no end to the vast sea of random perverts who'd be more than happy to chat with you. And while I think most 17-year-old girls would be very quick to avoid that kind of attention, I actually welcomed it. Uh, so this one day, a guy starts talking to me, and he immediately takes a liking to me after seeing my picture. And I bring him up because he was different than any other guy I'd ever talked to at that point. I always figured all guys were into boobs and blowjobs, but uh, this guy had more unusual tastes. He liked getting peed on. <laughs> and when he talked to me, he certainly sexualized me, but he didn't sexualize me like an object. He sexualized me like I was this goddess that should be worshipped and revered, which is still very dehumanizing, but in a much more flattering sort of way. <laughs> so I didn't block him, but I wasn't really nice to him either, you know? Uh, talking to him was kind of like squeezing a blackhead out of my face. It was really gross, but I was really intrigued. So he would tell me about all his little pee fantasies, and I would tell him that I thought he was gross and that I hated him. And for reasons I didn't understand at the time, he really liked it when I talked to him like that. It was like the meaner I was to him, the more he wanted my attention. Um, so this one day he messages me, and he starts going off about how amazing I am and how I'm so beautiful that my piss should be bottled and sold. <laughs> now, I'm not thinking much of this at the time. Like, this is how we usually talked. But the idea of bottling and selling my piss was really funny to me. So even though I thought it was just this hormone-fueled thought that he typed with one hand, <laughs> I decided to play along, and I was like, yeah, you know what, you should do that. You should buy my bottled piss. And he agreed. <laughs> but only under the condition that I send it to him first, and then he would pay me. Now, I'm still thinking this is all still a game at this point. There's no way this guy is going to send me money for my pee, especially if I send it to him first. But... What if he did? Like, even if there's just this tiny, tiny 1% chance that he pays me, what do I really have to lose here? So I took him up on it. <laughs> and later that day, I got a 12-ounce uh, bottle of Coke, and I drank it, and I waited around for nature to call, and when it did, I took this plastic bottle and I awkwardly positioned it wherever I figured my pee hole was. Um, I'm still not really sure exactly where it's at. Um, and uh, I filled it up. And it was kind of messy and awkward, but, you know, I got the job done. And then I sealed up the bottle, and I packaged it up, and I went to the post office. And I was so nervous going to this post office, you know, like, I would never shipped my waste before. And... Um, <laughs> I just had all these visions of the postal worker just ripping open the package and seeing what it was and like drilling me about toxic material and hazardous waste and taking my picture and posting it on the wall and 86ing me. <laughs> Luckily, none of that happened. He asked me what it was and of course I lied and he believed me and it got shipped off. So I breathed a sigh of relief. It was off my hands and uh, I told myself, to just put this behind me and forget about it. I really did not want to get my hopes up. So about a week later, I get an envelope back from him containing $250. <laughs> and it's difficult for me to describe just how utterly shocked and delighted I was. <laughs> like, I don't think I'd really ever had that much money before. And I just remember rolling around in my bed, covering myself in the bills, just laughing maniacally. <laughs> like, here was this substance that I flushed down the toilet multiple times a day, and it just earned me $250. <laughs> so, 
So the wheels in my mind immediately start turning. Like, what could I do with this money? I could pay for driver's ed, which was something my parents refused to pay for because they wanted me to earn it myself. <laughs> and then I started thinking, there has to be more guys like this out there. Like, this human toilet just found me by accident. Like, what would happen if I went looking for deranged perverts like this? So, I did a little homework. Now, I'd heard of women selling their used panties before, and I figured there had to be a way to do it online. So, I jumped on my computer and I did a little research. And I found a website called eBand. That's E-B-A-N-N-E-D. And it's an auction site, just like eBay, except they specialize in items that eBay has banned. So, <laughs> used panties, socks, shoes, toenail clippings, pubic hair, tampons, chewed up gum, Kleenex, you name it. Anything a woman can harvest off her body can be auctioned and sold off this site. <laughs> so, Yahtzee, I couldn't wait to get started. <laughs> Now, I'm still living at home at this point, so I had to wait around for my dad to go to work or leave or whatever, and uh, I would go and I'd get my uh, cheap uh, digital camera, and I would have a little sexy one-woman photo shoot in my underwear, uh, and I would take these pictures, and I'd upload them, and I would create all sorts of auctions, and I would sell things, and uh, it was great. They sold fantastic, and I started getting emails from all sorts of guys, just, just like that original pee drinker, just complimenting me and telling me about all their weird little fetishes. It was awesome, uh, and you know, it, it was a good situation because I had this part-time job to keep up with appearances, but after my shift, I could go home and log on to Kinky Narnia and like make a little cash on the side. So this was all well and good. I did it for weeks and months. Um, but I was kind of sloppy. And uh, my dad ended up finding out about it. And he found, like, I don't know, a pair of panties I had in a Ziploc bag that was being shipped off somewhere. And he kind of freaked out. Um, now, a little bit more about my parents. They're awesome. They're really good people. Um, they're divorced, but they've both very much been a part of my life. And uh, they're loving and supportive and you know everything you could want from your parents. So my dad calls my mom, and they decide that they need to have this emergency meeting with me. And they sit me down, and they're really concerned, and they just want to know, like, what's going on in my life and all this. And, you know, looking back, I, I know they had my best interest in heart, but at the time, I was just so mortified. And that just came across as anger, and I just did not want to talk to them about this. So I folded my hands, and I just stonewalled them, and I let them do all the talking. And... Uh, I just remember them saying that this was a big self-esteem issue, and that if I really respected myself, I wouldn't be doing it. And I'm thinking, there's no way we can have a conversation about this, because I don't know what they're talking about. This wasn't a self-esteem issue, this wasn't a cry for help, this was just a really rad way of making money. <laughs> so, I decided I just needed to move out. I was 18 by then, and I told them what they wanted to hear, that I wasn't doing it anymore, and uh, I got my own space. And once I had the freedom to pursue this without sneaking around, I just kept finding more ways of making money online from these guys. I created my own phone sex lines, but because I was more of a fetish girl than a phone sex operator, the conversations I would have sounded nothing like sex, at least to me anyway. Uh, all the guys that would call me would be very submissive, and they liked verbal humiliation, so I would just berate them and call them names and tell them to eat my shit, and they loved me. <laughs> and from these phone lines, I expanded into webcam shows, and uh, webcam shows expanded into little solo videos that I would make, and uh, before I knew it, I had kind of carved a name out for myself in this really niche online world and evolved into a cyber dominatrix, uh, or a humiliatrix, if you will. And uh, pretty soon, it really made no sense for me to keep my minimum wage job that I hated when I could just pedal a pair of panties and shred a man's ego and pay my bills that way. Uh, so I quit. Um, and it was cool, you know, I was really young and I was self-employed and I had, you know, making good money and I had the time to kind of, you know, use as I want. But I really didn't want to get complacent. 
uh, I, I just felt like it was a big accident, you know? And I, I didn't want to make the mistake that a lot of young people who come into money do, where they think it's just always going to be there. So I've always been stressed about the day that the money will slow down or stop altogether, but it didn't. It was like the longer I did it, the, the better I got at it, and the more popular I became. Um, which was good, but again, as a result, like the better I was getting, the harder it became to keep this a secret from my parents again. Uh, you know, they, they could tell something was up. My apartment was getting bigger, and my car was getting nicer, and I was somehow paying for college without asking them for any money, and, you know, it just didn't really add up, and it kind of created a wedge between us. Uh, I remember this day that, you know, my dad saw my new car, and he just kind of rolled his eyes and said, wow, kiddo, Starbucks is really paying you a lot. And my dad's the type of guy who can't totally ignore the elephant in the room, um, but he didn't want to acknowledge it directly because I don't think he really wanted to know where this money was coming from. Um, so, you know, we put on a little show for each other. And it was stupid, but it was easier than telling the truth. And I figured lots of people lie to their parents, and I can just avoid this topic and, you know, change the subject for the rest of my life. <sighs> the thing was... I really liked this bizarre little career that I created. And it wasn't just because men found me so unbelievably attractive that they would pay money to own anything I rubbed my pussy against, <laughs> but because I did it all on my own and I was self-reliant. And I didn't think my parents could ever really see it that way. And I didn't want my pride to be tainted by their misconceptions. So this one day, me, my dad, and the elephant, we're uh, all having dinner. And he uh, broke character in that little show we were supposed to perform for each other. And he said, look, I don't know what's going on in your life, but I just want you to know that I love you with all my heart, and I just want you to be happy, and I just want you to be safe. Please, please just tell me that you're happy and you're safe. <sighs> so I knew I had to tell him. Like, it was obvious to me that this was more than just me avoiding his judgments. He thought I was doing something worse than I really was. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to tell you. And the look on his face <laughs> when I said this was just that of sheer panic. Like, his eyes start darting around, and he's, like, shaking his head rapidly. He's like, no, 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 I don't need to know. That's okay. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> And just as I opened my mouth and before any words came out, he went, <laughs> as though I was just going to start dropping bombs on him. And I said, Dad, I humiliate men on the internet for a living. And he looked at me like somewhat confused with his hands still hovering over his ears. And I said, I don't meet anyone. I don't touch anyone. I don't even get naked. And his hands slowly began to lower. <laughs> And I said, these guys, they just have unusual fetishes, and they like it when a girl is mean to them. So essentially, I talk shit, and I get paid for it. And he tilted his head like he was perplexed. <laughs> and his eyes narrowed, and he took a moment or two to process this before he finally said, really? <laughs> Not like he was shaming me, but just like in disbelief. And I said, yeah, Dad, really. And he said, really? I'm like, yeah, Dad, really, that's what I do. And from there, ignited a real conversation. Um, he started asking me questions like, you know, who are these guys? What do you talk about? How did you run into them? How much money do you make? And we talked like that for well over an hour. And by the end of it all, I just remember him kind of staring off past me. And he said, wow. <laughs> You're a genius. <laughs> And uh, after that day, I just felt so much lighter. <laughs> and the best part is, I don't feel the need to lie about this to anyone anymore. There's really only a select few people whose opinions of me I care about. And once I came to clean to them about this and still got their love and support in return, no one else's opinion really mattered. Thank you. Yeah.